So it's here, it's now, it's game time. Yes. Lost to a team that had bobbed the builder up front. Tragos, what's happening? So just when you thought things were finally improving, we're struck with more injuries. It's here, it's now, it's game day. We're away for this one. We're off to the Shea. It's FC Halifax Tan v Barnet in the Vanarama National League. So if Arsenal are now getting players back fit before we are, that cabaret room must be very, very comfortable right now. Plasma TV's back on the wall, Sky Sports News. Little treat you're giving you a little rub, Dan. Why would they want to leave? You want happy ending? I managed to find a video of our medical team working hard on our injured players, trying to get them back fit. I got it! We stopped the bleeding! We stopped the bleeding! But anyway, that's another chat of bollocks. Let's get into the film news! So Halifax finished 15th last season in the National League, where they played 46 times, winning 13, drawing 20, losing 13, scoring 44, conceding 43, giving them a goal difference of plus one, and they ended on 59 points. They currently sit third, and the last five games have been three wins and two losses on the bounce. Pete Wilde is the manager and he took charge on the 24th of July 2019 where he's taken 11 games, winning 7, drawing once, losing 3, gives him a win percentage of 63.64. <laughs> Number 15, Liam McLinden, who has five goals in 10 games. I don't care about your mess. I don't give a fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. The 5th of the 3rd, 2019. FC Halifax 3, Barnet 0. You remember that game, don't you? It was the game where we had one shot on target all night and it was the missed penalty. We might have a lifeline just yet. Just been given a penalty. Shaq to Tate. Oh, I don't fucking believe this. I don't fucking believe this. What do you think fucking happens? So, let's get to the grand. Let's get some team news in. Let's get three points. And then let's get the fuck out of town. Fuck you, FC Halifax Tan, with your last of the summer wine. And it's grim up north. We won the league against you back in 2005. Will you finish ninth, you bunch of wankers? Come on, Barnet! <laughs> Starting 11 for Barnet today in a 4 2 3 1. Loach in goal. You're back for a Shay Alexander right back. Hernandez at left back. Your two centre halves of Captain Callum Reynolds and Ricardo Santos. The two in midfield today, Jack Taylor and Charlie Adams. The three in the advanced midfield role. Simon Akinoda on the wide left. Ephraim Mason Clark on the wide right. And Wesley Fonguk in the number 10 role. And Alfie Pavey up front. And this is our FC Halifax Tan lineup for today. 11 minutes in. FC Halifax Tan 1, Barnet 0. We're trying to call offside. Balls come down our right hand side. Show Silver was offside but Williams wasn't. Williams has carried on running. He's played the ball into the box too. Show Silver who's just tapped it in. Open 11. It's just been long ball. And then we're 1-0 down. We didn't play to the whistle. We just stopped and waited for the ref to call it. It was their first attack at goal and they scored it. Four minutes later there's been a goal. 
for FC Halifax Tan. FC Halifax Tan 2, on it, nil. Fuck me, that's got to be some of the most shambolic defending I've seen. And Andes is holding off Show Silver. McLinden's running through, no one's tracking him. Show Silver plays the ball through to him. McLinden just a hot knife through butter, goes through Santos and Reynolds, poor defending, and slots it into Loach's bottom right hand corner. Show Silver's been a danger man at the moment. All the plays coming down our left hand side towards him. Fuck me, they're defending in this game. It's 2-1 there. Straight from kickoff, we've got Daniel Varin and scored. Simak and Oda, on the edge of the box, curled it. Top corner, it's 2-1. Oh, yeah, yeah! <laughs> what is going on? It's not even 20 minutes in and it's 2-2. Charlie Adams with a shot from about 20 yards. It's a pulse and rolls in. About 10 to the other, still 2-2. Absolutely no defending has gone on in this game. Shoot on sight, I think, is the instructions by both managers. Halifax, we will ball in from a corner. They get a free header because we just don't know how to defend. Show Silver up there. He's just about to nick it. Loads grabs it. time here at the Shea and it's FC Halifax 2, it's Barnet 2. Christ, how do I sum that first 45 minutes up? Nothing happened for the first 10 minutes and then the next 10 minutes after that, there's been four goals. No idea what's gonna happen this second half. 45 minutes, gung-ho, come on Barnet. Almost quarter of an hour into the second half, still 2-2. Halifax dominated most of the possession, but we've had two glorious chances. Shea cut in, had a shot just on the edge of the air on his left foot, it went wide of the post. Hernandez whips the ball into Alfie Pavey. He's got all the time in the world and he heads it wide. And with 20 minutes to go, it's FC Halifax 3, it's Barnet 2. Shambolic defending again, far too slow to react. Just standing around in the box, waiting for someone else to do their job and clear it. Liam Nolan slots it into the bottom corner and we're just looking Looking at each other like, oh, wasn't that your man? No, I thought it was your man. Into the last 10, FC Halifax Town still lead 3 2. No plan B. We're still going with a 4 2 3 1. It's a 90th. Ref's just added on four minutes. It's still 3 2. We might have a chance to get a point. But then if I eat a salad, I might lose weight. And then about the 93rd minute, it's FC Halifax Town 4. It's Barnet 2. Embarrassing. That was absolutely embarrassing. King's got all the time and space in the world on the edge of our area. Driving through. So she Silver again, and he's just punished us. That ball has gone to him like a magnet today. So the game finished, FC Halifax Town 4, Barnet 2. Now before you all say, Matt, you're overreacting, it's a knee-jerk reaction, let's not read too much into it. It's only two losses in 11 games. I understand all of that more than anyone, but I will always call it how I see it. And if we want to improve going forward, then constructive criticism needs to be listened to. So we don't keep making the same mistakes and we can learn from them. 2 nil down after 15 minutes is just not good enough from any standards, from Premiership to Sunday League. Want to blame the Lino? Do that, but play to the whistle as well then. It's the first rule you learn about in football. Second goal, scoreboard defending. No excuses for that. We allowed them to dance through us without making a challenge because no one wanted to take charge and own up and take the ownership and get rid of the ball. And it was obvious after 10 minutes that Show Silver was their danger man. Everything was going to him. The ball stuck to him like he was a magnet and he ran the show for him. So why we didn't clock on to that, I just don't no, we should have took Reynolds off of marking him and switched him with Santos. Halifax had three players that was pretty much dictating the play. Show Silver was one, Williams another, and McLinden as well. But blinking, you missed four goals. There was four goals in seven minutes. So yes, we are back in the game. It's now 2-2, just like that. But what was the instructions from both sides? Shoot on target and don't worry about defending. Second half, it just went apart, and I can't really explain what went wrong. Halifax scored a third, and then they scored a fourth. We was just weak for 90 minutes wasn't aggressive enough. Ephraim Mason Clark had a poor game. Von Gook had a poor game. Pavey had a poor game. He should have put his chances away. In the second half, when we did get Santos to mark Show Silver, this is what it was like. Give it again inside. Oh, it. But in the first half, when Reynolds was marking him, it was like this. Even with 
we're 15 minutes to go and we're 3-2 Dan. Why do we still have no plan B? Still no one up top with Pavey. So every ball that he's getting in, he's knocking down. Who's he knocking down to? No one. I couldn't care less if you brought Matrovic on and put him up front. At least Pavey would have had someone to work with. Again, we stick with the same plan. So this is where you're saying you're overreacting. As any kind of football coach manager who can see the game, when you're chasing the game and you've got 15 minutes to go and you're losing, it's obvious to throw someone up there to give them more support. We didn't do that. We're just sitting off them too much. We let the ball bounce more often than one of Berry's checks did. So call it an overreaction, a knee-jerk reaction if you wish. I just call it how I see it and it wasn't good enough because it was the manner of how we lost that game. Because we've been dishing up performances like that for the last couple of seasons. Nothing's changed. So let's see what we can do on Tuesday night away to Ebbsfleet United. You know what to do. Ta-da.